Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is South Central Fisheries District Supervisor Paul Bailey. We're going to start our annual fishing previews. Uh, Paul, you guys are just finishing up your dissolved oxygen testing. How did things look in the South Central District? Actually, things looked pretty well this year, uh, despite some lower water levels in a lot of our district. Most of our lakes are down a, a few feet, which definitely increases the chance of winter kill occurring. But with the late onset of winter this year, really these lakes didn't form you know, really solid ice until late December in a lot of cases. You throw that in with the, the lack of snowfall we had throughout most of the winter, we actually weathered the storm pretty well. I think we dodged a lot of bullets in some of our more marginal fisheries. Sure, let's talk about the lack of moisture last summer and this winter. How is that going to affect the water levels? Well, water levels are definitely a lot lower. Uh, anglers have been able to take advantage of some of these real opportunistic type of fisheries that maybe had a maximum depth at their best of you know maybe 10, 12 feet of water. You take three or four feet of water off some of these lakes, like we have off a number of these fisheries, and that greatly enhances the threat of winter kills occurring. So we knew some of these lakes weren't going to be on the landscape long term. We bought us kind of another year with a, a mild winter here, but we're paying for that with this lack of moisture now. So a lot of these lakes could certainly use another shot of water. Let's move into your fish populations, Paul. Uh, how are walleyes doing in your district? Uh, very well. Uh, we've literally got dozens of good walleye fisheries in the South Central Fisheries District right now. I guess the, the most noteworthy one, of course, is the Missouri River Lake Oahe. Uh, anglers can expect good things out of that fishery this year. We've got f fish abundance is going to be pretty good, and there's always the, the trophy component to that fishery as well. Uh, a lot of our smaller lakes in the South Central District are still going to be producing very well for anglers this year. Places like uh, Lake Josephine, Jasper, Dry, Rice, Marvin Miller, Alkaline Lake, pla places like that that I think a lot of anglers are very familiar with uh, still have some tremendous walleye populations in them. Sure. Let's move on to pike. Uh, pike, uh, again, are kind of holding their own right now. Uh, we've still got good pike fishing opportunity out there in a number of lakes. Uh, we've had a, a few nice, uh, I'd say somewhat pleasant surprises this winter in a place like Harriet Arena that we've always known has a good pike population in it, but usually water clarity didn't allow that to produce very well for anglers. This winter it produced pretty well, so we're hoping that translates into some good springtime fishing for anglers as well. Uh, other more uh, traditional pike fisheries, Lake Helen, Horsehead Lake, uh, are still going to produce well for anglers again. Okay, and panfish. Uh, we guess when we're talking uh, bluegill, for instance, we do have some good bluegill opportunity in the in the South Central Fisheries District. Uh, Crown Butte, Harmon Lake, McDowell Dam, uh, Nigran Dam are all places that offer good opportunity to catch, maybe not the the largest size bluegill, but good numbers out there. And we've also got a couple of places, Freilich Dam and Fredham Lake, that don't have much for numbers, but they offer the potential to produce some of those pound plus bluegill. So there's there's good bluegill opportunity out there where maybe the opportunities declining in the South Central Fisheries District would be with our perch. Sure. Uh, catching a limit of perch is going to be a bit more of a challenge in the South Central District now. Uh, the sizes of these perch out there is pretty good right now, and that's just part of this boom and bust nature of the perch fisheries in North Dakota. After those springs of 9, 10, and 11, when so many of these lakes were gaining water, our perch fishing really took off. Uh, we had good reproductive conditions, and then just as importantly, we had good forage conditions for these perch out there. As we've been dealing with these declining water levels in recent years, conditions just haven't been that good for perch anymore. I wouldn't say we've hit a bust by any means yet, but uh, what anglers have became accustomed to over the last two or three years probably isn't going to be there in as abundance anymore. But the size structure of some of these perch populations is really good. The opportunity for some of those you know, 12 inch plus perch is certainly still out there. Sure. How about crappies? Uh, crappie is really the best game in town is going to be Lake Oahe yet. We're still riding this great uh, crappie reproductive success we had when the high water returned to Lake Oahe in 2009. So a lot of those 2009 fish are still out there. I'd say their abundance is declining a bit, but there's still really good crappie opportunity in Lake Oahe. Okay. In your district, Paul, this spring, summer, fall, do we have any research projects going on? Yeah, uh, I guess uh, several, I guess, this year. Uh, one that most anglers are going to be well aware of is the, the creel survey we'll be conducting on the Missouri River in Lake Oahe. Uh, that's something we do every three years. The last one we did was 2015, so 2018, we'll, we'll bring that up again. So what, what is a creel survey? Oh, where a creel survey is where we basically interview anglers to get a handle on how they're interacting with this fishery, you know, how successful they are, what they're harvesting, where they're coming from, a little bit of demographic information on our anglers as well. 
So that, that provides some pretty good information to us that helps us better manage the fishery and make sure we've got you know, the most appropriate regulations in place. Uh, we're going to be doing a couple of tagging projects this spring as well. We're going to continue the tagging project on Lake Oahe's Northern Pike that we began last year uh, where we tagged uh, basically pike that were one meter long and larger. So get to get an in, in, uh, some information on how anglers are utilizing these trophy northern pike in Lake Oahe. Because it, Lake Oahe, it really is a, a trophy pike fishery by anyone's standards right now. Uh, it produces 20 pound plus pike pretty consistently. So we just want to have a better understanding how anglers are utilizing those fish to make sure we can keep that trophy component to that fishery for years to come. Okay. And then one other tagging project we'll be working on this year too is a, a walleye tagging project on Alkaline Lake. We're basically going to try and duplicate the tagging project that we did back in 2008 where we tried to gain some information on how anglers are, again, utilizing those walleye in the alkaline lake fishery to get out and make sure, again, we've got appropriate regulations in place for the long-term good of that fishery. Sure. Fishing should be good in the South Central District? Yeah, well, there's a lot of optimism for this coming fishing season, for sure. A lot of good information, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Switching gears now, moving up the river, Dave Frieda, who's in charge of the Missouri River System, which also includes Lakes Kakawea. Dave, uh, been in the news lately. How is the snowpack? in the mountains? Uh, we're looking at another good runoff year, at least at this point in the a year, mountain snowpack, both above Fort Peck and the Yellowstone drainage is 120, 130 percent of normal for this time of year. So it's looking like the potential for a pretty good runoff. Um, projections have us about where we were last year's high, somewhere in that 1846 on Skakawea. So water levels are good? Yeah, they should be, and there's good plain snowpack, so we might get some early runoff, which really benefits us. Okay. Last year on Lake Sakakawea, we probably had some of the best walleye fishing we've ever seen. How are things going to be this year? They should be good. Um, we still have a record abundance of walleyes in the system and a very good size structure. Lots of, lots of fish. There's never been more walleyes in Lake Sakakawea since the dam was put in. And a lot of nice fish, a lot of 15 to low 20 inch fish, which are really desirable to anglers. And there is bigger fish, but certainly it's, it's, there's nothing bad to be said about the population. Forage is good? Forage is good. We've got a high abundance of rainbow smelt. So. Okay, let's move on to Northern Pike. Uh, Northern Pike, we're kind of on the downhill slope, I guess you could say, from the boom and bust cycles that we always see on Pike. The primarily 2009, we had a big year class. Overall abundance is trailing down somewhat, like you'd expect, but size is increasing. and. There's a lot of nice trophy pike in the system. The, the abundance of 20 pound, a little over 20 pound fish is definitely increasing. They're growing. So. Okay, good population, smallmouth bass? Smallmouth bass, yeah, definitely a good population. Primarily the lower half of the reservoir um, above the Van Hook arm. Smallmouth bass abundance really drops off, but the lower end, especially the east end, has a lot of nice smallmouth bass, largely overlooked for people targeting them. Okay, and salmon. Salmon, last year was a pretty good year of fishing. We thought it might be a little bit better. Certainly some anglers did exceptionally well, but we had an almost unprecedented spawning run in the fall when we did. We took near record number of eggs. There was a lot of salmon in the spawning run. Um, there was a lot of jacks, which are our young males, typically an indicator of what's to come in the following year or two. Um, all indications on that, they should be pretty good. How are things looking in the river, the tail race? In the um, obviously, the garrison reach is still struggling from, you know, the, you could say a hangover effect from the 2011 flood. Forage is still suppressed. Um, growth rates aren't good. There's, and we've had some pretty good recruitment of small, younger fish that aren't growing real well. Having said that, there's still a lot of good fishing to be had. And, um, you know, the, it'll get a lot of use at times. Even this winter, there's as far up as a tail race there has been some pretty good fishing and, and some nicer fish farther up toward the dam too. Okay. So. Do you have any projects going on, research projects, tagging, tagging projects, or anything going on in Lake Skakawea this year? Um, one thing we are doing is, we started last year and we're going to continue it for a few years at least, is with this maturing pike population that's got more trophy sized fish, we've started a tagging project using metal jaw, jaw tags on our fish. And we're tagging just pike over 40 inches long, which is kind of the benchmark of what a lot of people consider a trophy size fish. And we're tagging those and just looking at angler exploitation and movements and overall mortality of those fish over the next few years. Um, 
we don't have a lot of info back. The first year we tagged 62 pike over 40 inches in Sakakawea. To date, we've only had five angler returns of those. Um, three of those fish were released and two were harvested. So out of those 62, we've only seen anglers harvest two of those fish so far and, and none have been dark house speared at this point. A lot of good information, Dave, thank you. Thanks. Fishing licenses for the 2018-19 season can be purchased online at the Game and Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov or at licensing vendors that are linked to the department's online licensing system. Licenses may also be purchased by calling the department's instant licensing telephone number at 800-406-6409. Anglers are reminded that new fishing licenses are required April 1st. For fisheries biologist Dave Frieda, Paul Bailey, and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.